we're dealing with these uh, watches here and uh, how they affect us. I'm dealing with some temple secrets. Uh, with these watches, I'm showing you that there are the literal watches uh, that uh, we have in the Bible that uh, that not only just the people uh, of, uh, of Palestine use, Israel use, but others in that region use and how they are yet relevant today. And I'm showing you how these watches, they are uh, not just given just randomly, but they were given, you know, I feel just uh, uh, spiritually and uh, intuitively uh, because they're based on the movements of the heavens. And so it doesn't matter what time zone you're in, what country you're in, when it gets to the sixth watch on your time, which is 9 a.m. your time to 12 noon your time. And like on the West Coast right now, we're right there a half hour or so into the, uh, into the, into the sixth watch which is like after 9.30 here, a.m. And so no matter where you are at that time, there are mystical things happen. There are subtle things that are happening in the heavens. Number one, every two hours, there's a rising and a descending of the planets, okay? Uh, of the, uh, in the solar system of the zodiac, okay? And uh, that, it, that is there. We found out also that in traditional Chinese medicine, every two hours, there is a, a body system that is highlighted based Based on the circadian rhythm and that they have used this for thousands and thousands of years I think around 5,000 years they say uh, to, to, to cure illnesses and uh, for people to walk in divine health and wholeness and you know that uh, uh, you know people in that part of the world they have uh, a longer lifespan you know and most of them are not overweight and things like that it's because they know some things and they function uh, more closely with nature Okay, the way that we all used to, you find this among in indigenous people all over the all over the world. Those that are much closer to nature and stuff, they are more healthier and even more spiritually aware. Okay, and so the further you go west, or in the Western concept of thinking, in the Western world, we are detached from that because we have so many things to distract us and to uh, get our attention away from who we are. And so, and therefore we become uh, sickly, we become weak. Uh, we don't know who we are spiritually, naturally, and we become confused. And uh, we go through many, many changes. It's because we have forgotten the old landmark. I believe the scripture says uh, that we are not to remove the old landmark. Another scripture says that we are to, to seek out the ancient ways and stuff. Now, I know that a lot of modern uh, evangelicals would say, no, 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 we don't need all of that and stuff like that. And they call, they talk about ancestral worship, not realizing that this Bible that they teach on here and teach and preach from, it, it encourages not ancestral worship, but the recognizing of and the uh, uh, reverence or the uh, respect of the ancestors. Matter of fact, they oftentimes said, you know, that the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob they all referred back to their ancestors, right? And so we can do the same thing once we understand this because they had some great wisdom and knowledge. So I wanna go into this six watch here, which is 9 a.m. to 12 noon. And the, the part of the body that is highlighted that this energy is moving through is the pancreas and spleen, the pancreas and spleen. So this is your pancreas over here at left side your spleen is right up here on the side of it here and so and then uh, uh, that's from like around 9 to 10 and then from 11 to 12 the energy moves right here into the heart chakra okay but let's just deal with this pancreas and spleen here because you know uh, uh you know a lot of people especially in the western world they suffer with diabetes because the pancreas is not working properly okay the spleen and other things that are not working properly and so between nine o'clock i'll say between nine o'clock and ten o'clock in the morning okay this is where energy is being released to purify, to detoxify your pancreas and your spleen. This is where uh, the, the spirit within you that you're not even aware of, we know the Holy Spirit is there, but this energy that is called Ki or Chi in the Orient is moving within you and it is converting the, uh, the nutrients in your body to turn it into Chi. Woo, hiya. Haven't ever heard of Mel Chi Sedek. 
Ah, so it's in the word. It's in the word. You just have to look for it. You just have to understand it. And it was the same message all over the world. You know, some of the names were changed and stuff. But as you look at it and you look, understand it, you find that in the in the lineage of Jesus, I believe it's in Luke, you find that one of his lineages, one of the uh, people in his lineage, it was called Melchi. Okay, Mel Chi. Okay, and Chi uh, in the in, in in Asia is a name for like energy or the life force, vitality. We call it spirit. So we find that the Holy Spirit within us is not just to help us to speak in tongues and to do all of these supernatural things and you know and to you know vibrate all the wonderful things that we do and the Kundalini fire and all this, but it is also there. This Chi energy is there once it is unlocked to minister healing and to work with your circadian rhythm of your body to function over the 24 hour days and parts of your body are highlighted and the energy is moving through those parts at certain times. Now that you know or when you realize these certain times, you can engage in prayer and meditations in that part of your body. For example, between 9 a.m. to 10 uh, uh, a.m. or so, you can, if you have pancreas problem or spleen problems or anything related to that or diabetes, you want to be speaking into that. You want to be assisting consciously and with words and with intent of what is actually going on within your body. Now, this chi energy gets blocked because we put in the wrong data. I told you that the food that you eat is information. He told them that you can eat from every tree of the garden, you know, and but the garden of uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the midst. Don't eat of that one because that one is going to give uh, the assignment of death. It's going to give information that when you put it when you put it in your mouth, you partake of it is going to turn on the uh, on the uh, on the death gene, the sickness and disease, the aging gene, all of that. That's going to bring you from a fifth dimensional reality into a third dimensional reality. Did you realize that? the food that you eat can literally bring you into higher dimensions. The food that you eat can actually open up higher dimensions to you, okay? You say, I don't believe that. You can ask Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and a big Negro. <laughs> okay, they told when they were brought to Babylon and given the best of the best of foods because they were of the royal seed and because they were exceptionally skilled, highly skilled and gifted, you know, in the sciences and, and the uh, arts and things, this is okay. We, we don't want to eat this. We don't want to eat all the crab, the lobsters, and all of these bottom feeder stuff that, that go and eat up all of the stuff. See, because the Most High has created, you know, his own uh, planetary cleaning system, if you will. Okay. So there are certain animals in the sea that he says that don't eat these things because I've designed them to clean up all the garbage in the sea, like the catfish, the stuff that don't have uh, scales, the fins and stuff like that, the the the, the prawns, the, the, the lobster and the lobster tail. These people eat all kinds of big, huge, you know, insects crawling around, giant roaches in the sea that are designed to clean up the sea. And I'm sorry that if you, you know, uh, eat that maybe you need to hear that so that you can uh, change your diet. And so what they do, they eat this, and that means that they take in all of the information, all of this toxin, this poison data into their body. Okay. Then he says, I've designed certain animals to clean up the earth here. Okay. So you don't eat the pig. You don't eat, you know, other things that, that, you know, the snakes and other stuff that people like to eat. And you don't eat, you know, those things. It's, it's given in the Bible. People say, well, I'm not under the law. I can eat whatever I want. Eat whatever you want. I'm not telling you not to do it. You can eat whatever you want. And, but I want to let you know that it was eating that got the first parents in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it was eating that brought forth death. So people dig their graves with their forks, okay? And then they get in prayer lines. Can you pray for me? I do the devil is doing. The devil ain't doing nothing. You are you are putting the wrong data, the wrong information, because you make your God your belly. All right, let me get off of that. All right. So, but I'm trying to talk to you about the six watch here, right? And so I'm talking to you why that we have in this culture here so many people that uh, that are suffering with diabetes, type one, type two, and other things, and then uh, other issues that have to do with the pancreas and that whole system and the spleen there, and that that can be related to what we put within our body because we're putting the wrong information in, and just like in a in a computer, you open up the wrong win window, and uh, it's not and you don't
don't have the security that you need, your, your files are going to get corrupt. You're going to get a virus, right? And so it's going to just shut everything down. So now, so we find out that uh, during this time that, that the spleen is converting the food that you, that you took in in breakfast early in the morning or that's in your body into chi. But this chi, this energy is trying to move. This energy is trying to move. You have thousands of meridians throughout your body thousands of roadways you know you have thousands of small chakras spinning wheels of energy you have seven main chakra systems within the body okay we've talked about them but those are just the main ones and stuff but leading up to those feeding into those chakras those main seven chakras there you have thousands and you have all these meridians all of these roads and so on some of the roads in some of your bodies there's a big sign that says under construction there's boulders in the road. So this chi, this energy that's trying to get into your, your, into your pancreas so that it can keep you balanced and so that you won't have low blood sugar, high blood sugar, diabetes, and all these other things in your spleen area and stuff, is blocked. It's blocked because of, there's a roadblock of some type of toxins there. And so every day, every day, your body is working hard to get energy through there. It can't get through there. And so therefore, we get sick, people get sick, okay, or they get these things. But once they detoxify the body, that big roadblock, that boulder that was there, whether it is in, I'm, I'm just speaking specifically about the uh, pancreas and, and spleen right now, it could be the heart, it could be the liver, the lungs, the brain, whatever like that. But once we detoxify the body, so this energy, this chi or key energy, this life force that is in every person's body, doesn't matter if you are, Christian, Buddhist, Satanist, or whatever, you know, it is in everybody's body. It is the force that came with the universe from the most high God. So once the body is detoxified, now the energy can move through, okay? And that energy is designed and it has the information there to bring healing to your body, okay? And, uh, but it, it, if it can't get through, Okay, it can't bring healing there. So, of course, we understand and understand, uh, as we were talking about uh, in the last watch, you know, unto those that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness rise with healing rays or healing within his rings, wings. We know that there are supernatural miracles and healings take, take place. We do laying on of hands. We do touch healing. We do uh, distant healing. You know, we demonstrated right here on this platform many times and stuff. But, you know, and, and, and it works. It works. And but sometimes, you know, it don't work, you know, and uh, sometimes we have to do something. We have to let go of something so that manifestation can come. Okay, I'm just telling you about this and telling you what goes on at the sixth watch in your body, in your body, okay, and what is happening there, okay, and your uh, body is, is moving in a way with this information and with this chi to prepare you for the day to prepare you for the day, for the challenges, for the stresses and all of these things, this energy that is moving within you, you can't feel it, but it is happening, it is there, okay, in your body. Now you have moved from 9 a.m. to like around 11 a.m. fully into uh, earth, earth element within your body, okay? Remember it was overlaying because every two hours, okay, in a traditional Chinese medicine and the way the body working, the circadian rhythm is working and the way the heavens are working every two hours, something is happening within your body. So now you're full in earth uh, element here. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, okay, uh, 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 with that. Now this chi energy and grounding yourself with the earth what is it going to help? It's going to help you to think more clearly. It's going to help you to function more clearly. So if you are praying during this morning watch between 9 a.m. to 12, 12 p.m., you can be praying for your kidneys, you can be praying for your spleen, uh, you can be praying for your heart, and you can and and you're gonna uh, you can be praying for more mental clarity because that's what is happening within your body. Now, as you agree with that and with intent align yourself with that, it has to manifest with within you because the energy is flowing, the chi is flowing there. And if there are blockages that are there of physical things going on within your life, sometimes it's not just physical stuff, but it's emotional stuff, emotional baggage. Sometimes it could be anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, okay, hate, fear. All of these can become roadblocks in your body 
where all of these meridians, all of these roads are trying to bring this energy and whatever is there in the way, it won't get there. It won't get there until it is dissolved. Unforgiveness has to be dissolved. Fear, bitterness, strike, all of that has to be let go of. Okay, so if that is let go of in the early watch, the, the fifth watch where, you know, the verses to come, remember the prayer that we prayed and stuff, and you're setting your day for this and stuff. So by this time, you've let go of these things. So this chi energy is able to move more freely through your body, empowering you and bringing unto you a mental clarity. Okay. So now uh, between 11 a.m. and 12 a.m., you have moved from earth uh, uh, element into fire. Okay. You move from, uh, from earth element to fire. And remember every you know, two hours or so, there's these movements that are taking place in the heavens and also with your circadian rhythm of your body. And so now we're moving into the heart chakra. Okay, that is the bridge right here, the heart chakra. And uh, right now the sun is in Leo, which represent like the heart chakra here, right? And so this is the fire element. This is the unlocking of the emotions and the trauma. Some of the energetic stuff that I just mentioned, some of the emotional stuff that I just mentioned, negative things and stuff. And so during that time, if you are praying, you want to specifically pray. If you have things that are close to your heart, that could represent like relationships, okay, uh, uh, children, or people that uh, business relationships or people that are very close to your heart where things may not be exactly right or you want to want them to be better. OK, so you're praying and you're speaking into these things. And matter of fact, I mean, if even if you're placing your hand over your heart, you're amplifying that you're amplifying that because you are in alignment with the heavens, with the circadian rhythm, with the earth and everything. And this is between like, say, uh, as I say, between 11 a.m. and 12 a.m. And so this represents the, the circulatory system, your blood circulation and all that. So if you have a problem with that, you're praying regarding that during this time. I'm only giving you, you know, uh, parts of your body that go right along with these watches based on the heavens, based on uh, TCM and, and all of this. It is all connected together. It is all one. All right. Now, uh, one other thing here before I just go a little bit further here, you know, uh, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock noon, you know, in many countries, what do they do? They have a siesta around noon. They have a siesta. I don't know what a siesta is. Okay. That's like where you go take a nap. Matter of fact, in parts of uh, South America, even to this very day, you will find shops that will close up around between 12 and one and people will just go home and relax or take a nap. Did you know that? Isn't the Greek culture also parts of Nigeria also, you know, they have what is called a siesta, okay? Because one of the reason is that most of the people in those cultures, they don't get up at like say eight, nine, 10 o'clock, but they get up around six o'clock in the morning, right? Or maybe earlier or somewhere around there. And so, you know, and they're moving with the earth and with the circadian rhythm and everything. And so around 12, okay, it's a time you can say for meditation or relaxation, or it's a time uh, uh, for a siesta, okay? Why? Your body is gonna reboot. Your body is gonna reboot. So you have all of this uh, chi energy that is flowing through the meridians in your body that you're totally unaware of, working in your uh, pancreas, in your spleen, the heart, your blood, your circulatory system to make everything like, you know, work at its optimum level and stuff. And so when it gets around like 12 o'clock, you're yet at the end of that uh of that six watch and stuff is like it's about like going within i'm not saying that you can't pray those powerful prayers and things like that you can do that also you can right and so and but it's, it's a time of like going within and uh, relaxing and rebooting rebooting the physical body as well as the spiritual body so that you can continue to function at a high level okay and i'm gonna just uh point out some things here let me uh go back here to Psalms and uh, then I'm going to share something with you and we're going to end this and okay I may have gone a little bit longer today and because we're dealing with these uh, two watches here but I want to give you another morning um, uh, Psalm here okay now one of, one of the things I want to share with you is this that this is regarding like prayer 
uh, intercession and meditation, different types of prayers that you're praying. Did you realize that the pitch and the tone of your voice when you're praying can affect the outcome of what you're praying about? It can assist in things that you're praying about, okay? Let me just go back here a little bit. So uh, around the third watch, midnight to 3 a.m., that is a time of intercession where you are, you know, you are interceding and you are using, you know, you can use, you don't have to, but I'm just sharing some secrets with you. And if you're dealing with uh, uh, spiritual warfare and stuff, do you realize that the demons have a certain pitch, a certain range that they will respond to? Okay, you may not have known that, but they do. And uh, some of you have been in some of my meetings uh, where I, you know, do deliverance and stuff, or maybe even seen me here on here. And so when I'm, I'm, this is, I'm giving you temple secrets here, okay? <laughs> now this is gonna sound a little bit strange, but when you understand how to communicate at a certain frequency with those entities, they will more readily obey. When you understand how to communicate with those entities, okay, they will more readily or easily obey. And I'll tell you that when you're dealing with the demonic realm, you're dealing with a, a lower tone. You're dealing with a lower tone, okay, uh, that you are speaking in. Okay, even if you are a female or a soprano voice, you're dealing in a lower tone. You're speaking in that. And I will even growl sometime. I've done in service and people, what are you doing? I said, I'm talking to these devils. <laughs> <laughs> and it will stir them up. I mean, if you just make a sound and there's no power there, of course, nothing is going to happen. And but if you know what you're doing and you are communicating at that level and you are looking, you are seeing uh, what is happening and you lower your tone, your pitch, you know, to a lower level, because those entities on the negative side, they function at a very low vibration and their voices when they manifest and when they talk is at a growling lower level. They even show you this in the, in the movies and stuff. It's true, but you don't pick it up, you know, it is true. And so when you're doing deliverances and exorcism and stuff, or when you're doing uh, spiritual warfare, when I'm doing spiritual warfare, that's why I tell you guys that, you know, sometimes I, I shut off my camera or I shut off them because I am making certain sounds when I'm praying, especially when we first started out doing these things or I'm speaking in a language, you know, that I know that they understand at a certain pitch and they have to obey. Whether you are speaking uh, to someone that may be manifesting or whether you are speaking to principalities that are ruling over certain regions of the world, okay? And your voice is lowered in that pitch, they recognize, they recognize, especially if you know who you are and you're speaking with power. I've gone into meetings and stuff and uh, demonstrate this and uh, especially if, if I've announced I'm going to be doing a deliverance meeting or something, you know, I will go in and I will at, at some point in the in the service and stuff, usually during the praise and worship and stuff, I will go in that lower picture, that lower tone and people will just start to manifest. OK, because you you want them to manifest so that they won't be hiding so that you can cast them out. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm telling you some temple secrets here, okay? And some of you that may eventually be involved with deliverances and things like that. By the same token, when you're doing these morning prayers, you're gonna use a different pitch. It's gonna be a more higher pitch that you are speaking in if you are aligning yourself with all that is. I'm not saying that you can't do deliverance or things like that in the morning, that's not what I'm saying for the sake of understanding these watches and these times and how you're interfacing with the spirit world because that's what it's really about whether it is manifesting in your physical body neurophysiology or anything like that you know all of this is spiritual you know chi energy all of this is spiritual right okay and so you are you are lifting up uh, your voice. I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. Okay. That's Psalms 3 uh, verse 4.
roar, okay? And so it speaks of, it gives the idea of raising the voice, raising the pitch of the voice. You might say, I don't believe this. You know, uh, you can start to practice this when you are uh, engaging and wanting to manifest uh, and, and call in your guides and angels and stuff, you know? If you are, say for instance, worshiping, I'm just gonna try to give you my voice. It's kind of like, uh, yet got my morning voice here right now, but I'm going to just for the sake of just uh, demonstrating this, I'm going to try to just tap into <clears throat> this here. And you, you've heard praises like this where people are like worshiping. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah in that rhythm and I know that you can probably feel that okay because you're getting those higher pitches even though I'm a male and I don't do I don't do soprano but I can do falsetto soprano right but whatever your your voice is as you're in those higher pitches and stuff you are opening portals and stuff for the angelic to come in you're calling in those and that is the type of prayer during this morning watch during this morning watch from like 6 a.m. to 9 and into the 12 hour where you're raising up your voice into that high pitch like that okay and then from as i said from uh say 12 midnight to say around uh 12 to 3 you know you want to lower the pitch and stuff because you're dealing with certain things especially if you're consciously aware of what you're dealing with whether you are speaking in your native tongue or if you are using your angelic language or speaking in tongues right okay it, to to do that i'm going to show you this if you go to psalms 5 I told you i'm sharing with you some temple secrets this is stuff that i used to teach years ago and some of you've heard me tell about eventually i will teach on the eight mystical instruments okay because they're in the book of psalms here and uh david and some of the other prophetic musicians they uh told they ordered them to use certain instruments for certain psalms and because these were prayers they were psalms but they were also invocations can you hear what I'm saying? These psalms are very powerful. And those of you that were part of my altar service where I taught on that, you know, you know, I, I taught you certain things uh, about uh, these psalms and how to use them. And uh, I spoke specifically, you know, uh, from Psalms 119, but there were, you can find over in the Chronicles where there was this, um, these prophetic singers that were called and they were all prophets and the sons of Korah and these other people and David created you know he uh, all of these instruments it wasn't just instruments that he was playing but certain instruments were used for certain times because they were part of their invocations it was part of their prayers and things of that sort are you understanding what i'm saying and they were opening portals and stuff you might say well i don't believe that i don't i don't you know show me in the bible where is that i mean i remember david before he became king although he was anointed that there was a king by the name of saul and king saul had a problem with um uh you know he was schizophrenic he was uh, disassociated you know uh, did, had a dis, uh, disorder, right? He was mentally ill. And so when this spirit would come upon him, he would be a totally different person and he would try to kill people close to him, even his own family members. And so they would call for David and David had a harp, but he would tune the harp to a certain frequency and that frequency would drive out the spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. That certain chord would drive out the spirit. Okay. Because it is based on cymatics. Cymatics is the power of sound over matter, whether it is through an instrument or whether it is through your voice. It is the power of sound over matter. I've told you, I've, I've been in meetings when I used to travel internationally a lot. I, I, and I work, I'm not a musician, but I love to work with music and I know how to channel the music into certain ways because the Holy Ghost taught me this along with my voice. And I, I've had several uh, in, uh, experiences of working with people that could flow with me and I'm following my instructions and we've seen supernatural things happen 
tumors births just just totally destroyed and just all kinds of things happening you know supernatural winds manifesting just you know crazy stuff i could tell you right and this was based on the power of sound releasing sound how many remember that there was a prophet by the name of elisha and he didn't get a vision uh, at this time about what to do and he didn't get a word he didn't get a dream and he says call send call for a musician a minstrel to come not just any but someone that knew how to flow when the prophetic right and so as the person played it opened up a portal so that he could see a vision to know exactly what to do all right i'm talking about cymatics the power of sound over matter and so now you go to psalms number five here and this was to the chief musician upon nahila nahila is an instrument nahila is an instrument that is uh, like today would be a flute it would be like a wooden flute and a flute makes a high pitched sound it makes a high pitched sound there were some of these instruments that that uh, that were used throughout the book of psalms uh that had a very low pitch okay there was the bass sound and and but the, and there was the alamath which was also the sopranos i believe that's psalms 42 and it goes along with revelations 14 and when you really understand it right and so there was these uh different instruments so with this morning prayer we have a clue here of the sound the sound the power of sound because i'm talking to you about sound doctrine right <laughs> okay and so he says give ear to my words and so this was, was to be upon nahilath now nahilath okay we're talking about yet this morning prayer this this six watch between the fifth and sixth watch and he says this is going to be upon the healer this uh instrument wooden instrument wood holes that makes a high-pitched sound give ear to my word O yahweh consider my meditation <laughs> consider it hearken unto the voice of my cry my king my elohim for unto you do i pray my voice shalt thou hear in the morning <laughs> my voice so now how do you know that it was a high pitch i know it was a high pitch because he just told me that it was to be played upon the heliath now heliath is a high pitch instrument it's a soprano and so this is where you raise up the, the the vibratory frequency because you're calling in these entities and angels from higher dimensions to come and assist you okay are you getting this Somebody shout temple secrets, temple secrets. All right. Okay. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning, I will direct my prayer unto thee. Will I look up? Okay. And so I am directing this frequency into a higher pitch, a higher place, and it's being directed there. This is, so thou art my Elohim who had pleasure. Who had, uh, thou, art my, thou art not a God. Oh, thou art not a God or Elohim who hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell in thee. The foolish uh, shall not stand at your sight, and you hate the workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those that speak lies, and Yahweh will, will abhor the bloody and the deceitful. When he goes on down, this is a morning prayer, a morning prayer that you can pray, especially if you are dealing with and looking for guidance or you're being persecuted, you're being lied on, and people are trying to undermine you, take your job, trying to nullify a contract they made with you, all kinds of stuff. This is a prayer that you can pray using high pitch and worship and stuff like that. And Follow through with some water libations. My God, some powerful things will happen. In verse 10, he says, destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsel. And he goes on because this is uh, the, the prayer to defend you. And this prayer is prayed in the morning, in the morning. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Do you get do you get this? I'm showing you the, the metaphysical things. I'm showing you what is happening within your body, within your heart, what is happening within your, your pancreas, your spleen, and all of this stuff. But I'm also showing you uh, some of the spiritual things that take place in this sixth watch. Okay, in this sixth watch. Now I'm about to wrap this up. I'm about to wrap it up and I'm gonna end this sixth watch here. And uh, I wanna show you some things that happened during the sixth watch. Uh, mm -hmm. Number one, I'm gonna show you Mark 15, 25. And it says this, I'm gonna just read it to you. I could quote it to you, but I want you to see it because I wanna just emphasize this here and uh, show you something. Did I say 1525? Yeah, that's it. 1525. Let me go in verse 24. 
then it says, and, the, and when they had crucified him, talking about Yeshua, okay, they parted his garments, casting lots for them, whatever man should take. And it was the third hour that they crucified him. The third hour is the beginning of the sixth watch. The third hour, six o'clock is the first hour, seven o'clock, okay, okay, eight, nine, okay, so the third hour would be like around nine o'clock in the morning, okay, seven, eight, nine, okay, that's the way it is, seven, eight, nine, right, so the third hour is nine o'clock in the morning, so you find that Yeshua was crucified, he's put on the cross there at this sixth watch, the end of the fifth watch, at the beginning of the sixth watch, at the third hour, Okay, don't confuse it, okay? Now we're talking about watches and we're talking about hours here. So now we find that there is a crucifixion that takes place. So what is that saying to you and I? You know, it's a time where you crucify the flesh. It's a time that you uh, realize uh, that, that you are the sacrifice. What does the scripture say? Romans 12, 1, 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Your body is a living sacrifice. Now, how do you know that that is the time? Why was Yeshua crucified at nine o'clock in the morning? Why was he put on the cross at nine o'clock in the morning? Because he had to fulfill everything of the Torah. It was at nine o'clock in the morning for the morning sacrifice. Nine o'clock in the morning, at nine o'clock in the morning, just at the end of the uh, fifth watch, beginning of the sixth watch, that was the morning sacrifice. So he became the morning sacrifice. You must become the morning sacrifice. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Hallelujah by the renewing of your mind. So it's the time of sacrifice, but in that sacrifice, there's transformation. There is transformation just as Yeshua. Now, how long was he on the cross? The scripture says from the sixth to the ninth, uh, he, uh, that he died from the sixth to the ninth hour. He's put on the cross at, at the third hour. And so the, the, uh, the ninth hour, what time is that? Okay, that's three o'clock in the evening. That's the time of the evening sacrifice. I'm just jumping ahead, just giving you some stuff here, okay? So he had to become the morning and the evening sacrifice. So he's fulfilling these watches because even the sacrifices that they had in the Torah was based on these watches before the watches were ever given. Can you hear what I'm saying? Can you hear what I'm saying? And so this sixth watch here, this is the time of sacrifice. Okay, get on yourself. You can do the sacrifice as in giving of, of offerings or donations or helping people. All of those things, you know, happens during this time or should be happening during this time here. All right, let me just move on here and I'm almost finished. Remember that this is during the time where the chi is moving through the heart and the circulatory system. You're unlocking uh, the emotional trauma and all of this stuff is happening. Why? Because you are releasing, you're giving up. You're saying, okay, you know, crucify me, take whatever it takes, you're giving up. So of course, you're gonna release these things that's been trapped there, you know, forever, how long they've been, okay? So it's a time of, uh, uh, let me just go a little bit further here. One other thing here, matter of fact, let me just put this, and while I am thinking of it here, for those that may be on here that, uh, okay, want to give, I always forget that, that information. Somebody was asking about the Cash App information the other night. So there it is in the chat there. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube, it will be in the description box. Okay, so, uh, so now we found out it is a time of sacrifice, it's time that you become a sacrifice. What else happened at nine o'clock in the morning in that six watch? Acts chapter two, Acts chapter two. Oh yes, they had been there in the upper room for 10 days, 10 days. They were trying to decide for some time who was gonna become the next apostle, the 12th, you know, because Judas had hung himself, right? And so they were trying to decide. And finally, after they got beyond all the politics, all the religious stuff, all of the other stuff that didn't really even matter and got in touch with God. And finally, after they moved from the supper room to the upper room, because that's where it's happening in the higher spaces of consciousness, you know, but many times 
recognize we're too busy in the supper room. Remember, we talked about the food is data. We're getting in all of this wrong information within the body. So the body starts to malfunction, break down with inflammation and viruses and stuff. And so we got to get rid of it. Otherwise, the body breaks down. So it has to be rebooted and stuff and get all this stuff out. And so now they're in the upper room. The scripture says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the day of Pentecost. Oh, I don't want to deal with that. But anyway, his astrological stuff again. Okay, it was full of come. They were all gathered together in one place and in one accord. And suddenly, okay, so we find that in this uh, six watch, things quickly happen. Things quickly happen. And I prophesy to you that during your six watch right now, it is a six watch on the West Coast here. Matter of fact, on the on those of you that are in mountain time that are on here, it is this six watch. I prophesy to you, no matter what time zone that you are in, that things will suddenly happen, that things would suddenly happen. The scripture says that he will suddenly come to his temple. He will suddenly, and that this is the time of things quickly happen that you've been waiting for, that you've been expecting, but suddenly they happen. Why? Because you come into one accord and one mind with spirit. You come into alignment with everything that is. And so it has to happen. It has to happen. Why? Because it's already happened. It's already done. It's already done. Your family, your uh, spouse, your children, your job, your your business, your spirituality. He says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And they were, uh, uh, and they were put into the cloven tongues like a fire that set upon them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Scripture says that, right? And then it gives a list of about 15 different languages or so that they spoke in. And then the people all around them saw them as they came staggering out of the upper room, speaking in all of these languages. Yes, that's in your Bible. You know, they're in an upper room and then there's a festival going on. People from all over the kind of like known world are there and they are proclaiming this, this gospel, this truth to them in their own languages. Okay. And it's just, these are Galileans. These are people that are ignorant and unlearned. They don't have an education. Matter of fact, they haven't even been to former Hebrew school. How is it that we hear them speaking the mysteries of God, the riches of God, you know, in our own language? Okay. And, uh, and he's, others said that these people are drunk. Why did they say they were drunk? Because they were staggering. They were falling. They were shaking. They were vibrating. It was the Holy Ghost on them. Okay. And Peter's standing up. I mean that he was laid out somewhere at first. He stood up <laughs> with the eleven and said, "These are not drunk as you think they are, but this is seeing that it's just the third uh, hour of the day. It's nine o'clock in the morning, just the beginning of the sixth watch. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel that it shall come to pass in the last days. Said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy upon my servants and upon my handmaids. Will I pour out my spirit in that day and they shall prophesy. And it's going to come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be delivered. Okay, and it goes on and talk about that. And so we find that the sixth watch is a time for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon you is a time for de de declaring and decreeing deliverance and salvation for your family members, your sons, your daughters and stuff that they are filled with the Holy Ghost. It's a time of tapping into the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues. So if you don't know how to pray, don't know what to pray for, just allow spirit to begin to pray through you and pray in tongues and uh, the sixth watch. Now I'm gonna stop here because I don't wanna go further. I've kept you long enough. And I want to just remind you that this is a time of, uh, is a time of, of resting in him. It is a time of dealing with uh, the things that have to do with the uh, pancreas and the spleen. And I don't wanna go into more details of that because we would be too long here. It's a time of releasing that chi, that energy, the life force of God within you to minister even into the circulatory system, your heart dealing with the trauma and the things that store within your heart, uh, letting it go, becoming that morning sacrifice, becoming that morning sacrifice, laying your life down, your ego and the things that we hold on to that we think that we need Okay, so that you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind and filled with the power of the Most High God. So, Father, I just thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for your people today and your anointing. And I just pray that you would take this word and this message and the secrets of the sixth watch uh, and just uh, that they would just be uh, 
understood within the hearts of your people and that we may be able to overstand, implement them and function in them. And I speak to every person that may be listening to this uh, broadcast that may be uh, going through problems with diabetes, type one, type two, or whatever. I just agree for divine healing in the name of Yeshua that whatever blockages, whatever is going on with the pancreas is not uh, functioning uh, the proper way where the insulin levels are not where they should be. I correct that. I correct it and I command it to be whole and healed in the name of Yeshua. Any problems with the spleen, I just command to be uh, corrected and healed. And in, uh, because the spleen is a part of the lymphatic system, I uh, just speaks into the lymphatic system of the body. And uh, I thank you for healing and wholeness and soundness and for this complete body uh, system. I speak into the heart, into the circulatory system, uh, those that may be struggling or going through problems with uh, a heart disease or or cholesterol in their arteries and stuff we just smite it in the mighty name of yeshua and we command the blood flow to go in the name of yeshua and we command the four chambers to function properly and all of the arteries everything to flow those that have an irregular or slow heartbeat i command the heart to beat properly in the mighty name of yeshua those that have a a, a fast rhythm where the heart beats too fast i command it to slow down slow down slow down and and be normally in the mighty name of Yeshua. And we thank you for it and we praise you, God, for your divine healing. Your word says, let not our heart be troubled. And we agree with that for every person listening. We, and we lay down our lives uh, and as the living sacrifice. And we willingly do this so that we may be transformed into the image of the Son. And fill every person that's listening to my voice with the power of the Holy Ghost. Every person that haven't had the experience of speaking in tongues, let them begin to experience it. I want to open up some of your mics, some of you that are yet here uh, that can, and I want you to pray in your heavenly languages, if possible, pray in tongues, just release that uh, angelic light language out of you. If you can, uh, unmute yourself and just to release that. Bless the mighty name of the Lord God. Bless the name of the Lord God. 